Welcome to the B'nai B'rith International Podcast. I'm CEO Dan Mariashin. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm joined today by Bob Wexler, the author of The Jewish Baseball Card Book, a comprehensive history of Jews and baseball told through baseball cards. Featuring 698 baseball cards, this book traces the stories of Jewish Major League Baseball players from 1871 through today. Bob is also the author of the 2007 book Day by Day in Jewish Sports History and is a retired newspaper sports editor in Pennsylvania's Lehigh Valley. Bob, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Dan. So before we talk about the book and we talk about baseball cards, um, what do you think about the the Jewish love affair with baseball? Uh, is it is it because we we are an urban community, uh, or is there something more there? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's, it started out that way with the early immigrants in the early 1900s. Uh, everybody had different language, different customs, and one way to assimilate into American life was through baseball. Now the kids themselves were actually more interested in basketball and boxing sports you could participate in in the settlement houses. You needed, all you needed was a gym. You didn't need a whole baseball diamond. Uh, and then into the 30s, it was probably the first golden age of Jewish baseball because the second generation of players grew up in the United States and started playing ball around the time Hank Greenberg came about. I think right now we're in our second uh, golden age since 2000. Uh, we've had Ryan Braun winning Rookie of the Year in the MVP award. We've had Theo Epstein general manager taking the Cubs and the Red Sox to World Series championships after 100 years. Last year's World Series where Jock Peterson and Alex Bregman both combined for five homers. Uh, Bregman won the All-Star MVP this year. And uh, I think also the success of the Team Israel in the World Baseball Classic, surprisingly finishing sixth place, is a brand new interest in Jewish baseball. Well, it, it certainly is uh, something that's... Um captured the imagination, really, of, of millions of Jews over the years. And uh, I'm sure that uh, your book will, uh, will find a lot of readers uh, because of the personal attachment uh, to the game. But now, tell us how the book came about. Well, this goes back to 2003. There's an organization called Jewish Major Leaguers Incorporated. It's, it's a nonprofit out of the Boston area, joined by Martin Abramowitz. And they decided that they were going to publish a baseball card of every Jewish major leaguer up to that time. There were about 140 of them. About 40 of them had never had baseball cards because they had real short careers or were just playing in late years when there were no cards that issued at all. So they came out with a set in association with the American Jewish Historical Society. And it was real popular. And they started doing update sets every year with the new players. And in 2008, uh, they did a historic edition based on my first book, Day by Day in Jewish Sports History, where significant achievements like uh, Phil Weintraub's 11 RBIs in one game, or uh, Joe Ginsburg catching, being the first Jewish catcher to catch a no-hitter, just really oddball things like that. They made a whole set out of it. And 2014 was the last set, and they decided, let's put out a book with the real cards, not the ones that are issued way after these players have finished their careers. So they contacted me and thought I wanted to see if I was interested. I had just retired. I was looking for something to do. And this was right up my alley. So uh, we worked on it, and it came out at the end of the last season. Well, let's talk about baseball cards in general first uh, for, for a bit. I, I was a collector, uh, like so many others. Probably from the time I was nine to maybe thirteen, and uh, I, I can still smell the uh, the gum that came out of that top uh, pack, which yeah, uh, cost cards, a nickel. I think and, the cards are better than the gum. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I I can only recall maybe five Jewish players from that era. Of course, uh, Koufax, uh, without question. There was Larry and Norm Sherry. Uh, played uh, with the Dodgers also, um, among other teams. Um, there was Barry Latman, who I think uh, was a pitcher for the, the Indians at that time, and, and possibly Joe Ginsburg. It's possible. I, I'm not sure, but there, there, there weren't a lot. And I do remember, however, getting their cards. I'm not sure I knew that they were Jewish, of, of course, except for Koufax. Uh, but I think those were basically the players in, in my day. Uh, but uh, a few others like Ed Meyer 
pitched for a year for the Cubs, but those are the, the big, the five basic players there. Right, but but cards themselves. I mean, how far back does that go? I'm talking now. When I started this in, in the late '50s and the early '60s, but baseball cards themselves, how far back do they go? Technically, they go back to the 1860s. There was a sporting goods store that put out an advertisement, uh, had an advertisement on the back and a picture of a local baseball team on the front. And those were technically the first baseball cards. You know, uh, the real cards didn't really start until the 1880s. So several tobacco companies came out and issued them in packs of tobacco. They were much smaller than they are today, about an inch by an inch and a half. And then it was a lull again until about 1910 when the first big major set came out, again sponsored by several different tobacco companies. Uh, and then after that, the tobacco, uh, once the Sherman Antitrust Act broke up the American Tobacco Company, uh, the cards kind of switched to candies, caramels, chocolates, got into cookies. Then it was a lull in the 1920s. And the first gum car started coming out around 1933 with Gowdy. And you had a lot of regional issues that came out, just uh, you know, hot dog companies, popcorn companies, uh, dairies would put out special sets of just local teams. And then you get to 1952 when Topps came out with its first set, which was considered the, mo- the uh, modern, modern baseball card with the standard size. So who was the first Jewish player to be featured on a baseball card? That would be Barney Pelty. Pelty was a really good pitcher for some horrible Philadelphia athletics teams in 1909, 1910, 1911. Uh, he's got the lowest career ERA of all the Jewish pitchers, but he lost so many games. 19, 19 games were one to nothing losses. His team just didn't support him offensively at all. But he appears on several 1909, 1910 cards. And then after that? Uh Probably uh, Ed Erskine Meyer, who pitched was the first Jewish 20 game winner. He pitched for the Phillies in 1914, 1915. First Jewish player to appear in the uh, World Series. He appeared on a, a set from, put out by Cracker Jacks and another one put out by Sporting News, the newspaper. Now, you know, you mentioned, you know, players mm-hmm. who had, as, as they say in the jargon of the game, a cup of coffee at the major league level. Um, how did it work when they would put out a series, when Tops would put out a series, or earlier than that? Um, in other words, everyone on a on a baseball team roster would get their card, or or did you have to uh, have some kind of, of staying power to to be in that package? I mean, how? Yeah, well, yeah. The first the first set in fifty two, the top set in fifty two was four hundred some cards. It certainly wasn't every player. Uh, Cy Berger, who's Jewish, was the head of the Tops, uh, went around and signed all the top players for the day. And they would set out, uh, they wouldn't set out all 400 cards at the same time. They'd do maybe 100 in March and then another 100 in May, and they spread them out. Uh, the sets got a little bit get, getting larger and larger. Uh, you still got guys who don't come out in the regular sets. The regular sets now are about 700 cards. And then Toss will put out uh, update sets at the end of the year with players who made their debuts that season. So not everybody gets on a card every year, but uh, there's a lot more now than there used to be. Plus, in around 1970, minor league teams started putting out team sets. So just about anybody who comes in through a minor league uh, doesn't even make it to the majors. They have their own minor league cards. So of all the Jewish players who have played Major League Baseball, what percentage of those players actually have cards? Well, uh, as of... Uh, uh, 19, uh, as of 2003, when Jewish major leaguers put out their set, there were only 40 out of 100. Set. Now there's 177 major leaguers uh, who are Jewish. There were 40 at the time when there were 140. So I'm not good at the math, but that's uh, quite a few of them. And there are also some that appeared on uh, not regular cards, but Exhibit Supply Company, which these penny arcade postcards that had pictures of boxers and movie stars and baseball players. There's a few players who appeared on those cards and, and nowhere else. But one thing I, should, I think I should mention to the listeners is how we decide who's Jewish and who's not. Uh, I go by the Jewish uh, sports review uh, qualifications. You have to have at least one Jewish parent. You have to be willing to be identified as Jewish. 
and you can't follow another religion while you're a player. So that leaves out people like Lou Boudreau, who had a Jewish mother, who divorced the father. Boudreau went to live with the father when he was two years old and never identified as Jewish throughout his life. Some people will count him. We don't. Is, is Ralph Branca in that group? No, he didn't find out his Jewish heritage until he was up in his 80s. He wasn't identified as a player. But there's several players who, who, who uh, converted either during or after their playing days, and we usually count those. Now, in, in the book, do you have the uh, Hank Greenberg and Sandy Koufax rookie cards? Because yeah. I would imagine, I would imagine they would be quite valuable, uh, not to mention yeah, well, the interest that there would be in them. Right. I, I, uh, Gowdy was 1934. I mean, uh, Greenberg was 1934 Gowdy Gump card, and Koufax. Uh, appeared in the 1955 Topps card, his rookie year. He, he didn't play very much. He actually didn't get into a game until mid-June. Right. Right. So, but they're featured in the book? Yes. And um, the series that, um, this, the various series that were put out of Jewish players, um, why was the decision made in, in 2014 to, to stop the uh, production of the cards? Uh, this guy, well, we're setting up another one for 2000. We we pretty much covered all the historical aspects. There was a special edition honoring Hank Greenberg, the 75th anniversary of his major league debut. So it just got to the point where they're, they're getting three or four major new major leaguers a year, and uh, they decided we're going to wait till next year and do a, a new century edition featuring everybody who played from, from 2000 on. So Hank Greenberg and Sandy Koufax are clearly uh, household names, at least in, in many Jewish households and beyond. Um, who are some of your favorite players whose names we might not know? Well, Al Rosen, uh, he was the uh, MVP in 1953 in the American League. Uh, probably had, would have had a Hall of Fame career if he had not gotten injured. He only played about seven seasons. Uh, I like Barney Pelty, who I mentioned before. Uh, oh, Mo Berg, of course. I don't know if you've seen the new movie on on Berg's uh, career with the uh, the uh, OAS and his spy career during the 1940s. But uh, he was an interesting player, probably the most intelligent player who ever played the ball the game. Also, one of the most strange people. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I I I kind of. I kind of put my own fantasy league team together. You know, I I, I, let, I kind of let, root for the Jewish players, even though they're playing on all different teams. And I kind of, you know, I check every night to see how everybody does. I kind of uh, enjoy doing that. Over the years, uh, stories of, of discrimination, anti-Semitism that, that may have come out? Not a lot. There's a, there were a few incidents with Greenberg, uh, Al Rosen, somebody from the White Sox was calling him, Doug was calling him names, and Rosen went over and challenged them. Uh, Cal Abrams, who was an outfielder for the Dodgers and Pirates and Orioles in the 50s, uh, had trouble with his Dodgers manager who didn't, didn't like him. Uh, he thought it was anti-Semitism. But most players these days haven't really run into any problems. I mean, in the early days, back in the 1920s, uh, until Andy Cohen came up with the New York Giants, second baseman, there were five players who were born with the name Cohen, and they all changed it to Bowen and Kane and Cooney just to avoid anti-Semitism at the time. But you don't see that happening today. Well, of course, baseball is uh, more than just the players. Uh, tell us about the non-playing personnel, Jewish general managers, umpires, broadcasters. Yeah, it's, there are Jewish people everywhere. Bud Selig was the, just uh, retired as commissioner. I mentioned Theo Epstein before. Uh, Mel Allen, uh, announcer Harry Hartman. Uh, people don't know about him. He was the Cincinnati Reds announcer in 1929, the first first announcer to do an entire season live. Back then, uh, teams announcers used to do the home games, and then they'd recreate the away games on uh, teletype. Uh, Hartman went to the uh, all the games home and away, and he coined the phrase "going, going, gone." Uh, there's been a few managers. In fact, uh, Brad Austin was just was fired as a Detroit Tigers manager last year, and Gabe Kapler is now the manager of the Phillies. So we've had two managers in, in the last 10 years. Uh, clown Prince of Baseball, you had uh, uh, 
uh, uh, John, John F. Blank and uh, I think it was and was it Al Shat? Al, well, Al, Al Shat was the first one. Yeah. And then uh, the second one was following him was uh, Max Patkin. That's it. Or Max Patkin, right? So just about every aspect of baseball. Uh, and and of course uh, today uh, team ownership. Um, uh, I'm I'm sure there are uh, several teams that that have. Um, uh, Jews, not only in the front office, but in terms of, of team ownership. Sure. Uh, Oakland's one. Um, uh, I believe the Mets. The, the, uh, a lot of the general, the general manager of the Dodgers now is, is, is Jewish. And I have to believe that, you know, you, you just don't do this. There has to be a connection to the game. There has to be a love of the game uh, to to want to be an owner, to be – front office, uh, general manager, not to mention a player. I mean, it's, it, there has to be that special attachment to the game. Sure. Yeah, I, I think um, it's more so now. I mean, back in the 20s and 30s, it was mostly boxing. You know, you know, there were more Jewish boxers than there were Italian and Irish boxers. Uh, that's kind of slipped away. And you've got Jewish owners, not only in basketball and football, but uh, baseball and yeah, you're right. You, you have to love it, and it's a, a labor of love for some people. And I know people who have been involved in putting it. There's websites now, JewishBaseballNews.com. There's Jewish Major, Jewish uh, Major Leaguers.com. There's uh, the Jewish Baseball Hall of Fame. So a lot of people are just involved, and there's a lot of attention on, on Jews and sports. Let's go back to the cards for just a moment. Uh, tell us about error cards, and we always hear about that, whether it's in baseball cards or stamps or uh, other kinds of collectibles. Uh, what about the error cards? This was some interesting examples. Uh, I usually ignore the. Sometimes there's mistakes on the backs, but that does happen. But there's been times where the Jewish players have been misidentified on cards. Uh, there's one in the 1931 arcade card they called exhibit it was a four and one there were four yankees on on the card uh, babe ruth lou gehrig lynn larry and supposedly jimmy reese jimmy reese was babe ruth's roommate he was jewish his real name was Jaime solomon played about two or three years for the yankees and then the cardinals and a really long time coach and manager in the, in the majors he's still a batting uh coach for the angels when he died in, like, in at age 92. so jimmy reese is listed on the card but the the actual picture is of Andy Reese, who was a, a utility player for the New York Giants at the time. Uh, the Mets in 1991 put out a historic set uh, of every player who ever played for the team since 1962. Uh, Joe Ginsburg is on there. They switched his picture with Hobie Landreth, the other catcher for the Mets when, when they first started out. There's uh, Ian Kinsler, who now plays for the Angels, his rookie card. As uh, misidentified, uh, the picture of Erasmo Ramirez, who was a pitcher. So it's kind of hard to mix them up, but that it happens, and it's it's a lot of fun when that, when things like that happen. Well, on my uh, my visit to Cooperstown, you know, on on the main street in town, you know, they have shops where you where you can go in and you can put on a uniform of your choosing, your, your favorite team. They give you a bat. There's a backdrop with a, a crowd. Looks like a stadium. And uh, so I have a card. There's a, there's a, if you come to my office, I'll show you my card. It's of me. Um, I, uh, I don't look the part uh, of, uh, of uh, the slugger that I, uh, at least I appear to be, I try to be in this picture. But uh, I think everybody who is really in love with the game um, has some special relationship to those cards. And uh, I certainly did, and you obviously did with this a terrific book. Uh, it's the Jewish Baseball Card Book. It's by Bob Wexler, and every fan should have a copy, especially during baseball season. We're more than halfway through, so there's still plenty of time to enjoy the game on the field and also in the book. So, Bob, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. We appreciate uh, your being here. Thanks for having me, and you can check it out on Amazon.com. Very good. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening to our podcast. Please listen and visit, rather, our website, B'nabrith.org. Like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Subscribe on your smartphone through the podcast app for iPhone or through Google Play for Android. And lastly, tell a friend about us. 
For my guest, Bob Wexler, I'm Dan Mary Ashen. We'll talk to you next time on the B'nai B'rith International Podcast.